Well, it's a beautiful day in Bonita, California, which is really exciting because today we're gonna to test out the Highboy EX6 to see how it performs. So you're probably thinking to yourself, what kind of test are you really gonna do with this bike? Well, I'm gonna do what these bikes are really designed for and what the owners actually use them for as well. And for me specifically, I'm really thirsty this morning. So I'm gonna go get a cup of coffee. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, a cup of coffee? That's not very hard to do on e-bike, but there is one catch. The coffee that I want is about 22 to 23 miles that way. So what I'm hoping to accomplish by doing this is testing out the comfort of the bike, the range of the bike, and just see how it performs in general. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go get some coffee. All right, so about ready to go, uh, real quick. One thing that I'm really excited about with this one is we do have the luggage rack in the back, which Highway claims can handle up to 176 pounds. Obviously, I'm not carrying that much. Um, if you've ever seen my videos, you always see this backpack. That's all my filming equipment, so it is kind of nice not having to actually put it on my back today. So uh, let's see how it goes. Got the watch ready. Power her up. And let's go. So to give you a little insight on the route, the plan is to ride the bike from Bonita to Coronado, California, using city streets and the Bayshore Bikeway, which is a bike-only path that runs from downtown San Diego to the Coronado Ferry Landing. And on the way back, I'm planning to use an alternate route to try and cut down on the miles and just repeating the same route. So let's see how it goes. So as you can tell so far, it was a beautiful day in San Diego when I did this ride. Before this, I've never ridden a bike this far on the streets, so I was pretty excited. After about 15 minutes or so, I was feeling pretty good and getting used to the bike, and I was really enjoying my ride. But admittedly, I was really excited to get off the road and onto the main bike path, so I could really put down some miles without worrying about cars flying past me. And another great thing that I really enjoyed, and just the advantage of riding a bike instead of driving, is I got to enjoy the flowers and the greenery and just the beauty all around me. Okay, so now that we're on the bikeway, we're gonna discuss what we're trying to achieve here and kind of like my testing methods I'm gonna use. So I think I calculated this whole round trip should be about 40 to 45 miles, depending on, uh, I'm taking a different route back. So my plan is to in pedal assist all the way to Coronado, which is where the coffee shop is, only because I didn't bring a battery charger. So if this thing runs out of battery, and it doesn't live up to the 75 mile range, I'm kind of up the creek. So because of that, uh, we're just gonna maintain just pedaling only. So I'm hoping that there's enough battery on my way back that I can maybe use the throttle a little bit, check out, see how fast I can go. So. Okay. So just checking in. We're about five miles into the trip. We're actually passing the Plaza Bonita mall so far the bike's doing really really well shifting's really good it's fairly comfortable very upright seating position obviously since it is a comfort bike one thing i'm going to be monitoring is on the display there is an odometer so i currently have my garmin gps watch running so i'm going to see how accurate that is so far it is dead accurate now how i'll do long term who knows but uh we'll find out and we'll check in a little bit see what happens Updates. We're a little over seven and a half miles in. So far, no problems. Just cruising along, having fun. Very relaxed ride. Very, very relaxed ride. So one thing I really, really like is the 20-inch fat tires. Very, very comfortable. They have some give to them. So even though this is a hard tail and has, you know, a tiny fork, but I think it's like 75 millimeters of travel, it's still very, very comfortable. Seat, very plush, very comfortable. So now that I've been pedaling in a straight line for a while, I do have one mild complaint. It's not the biggest deal in the world and it's preferential. So this bike has a seven speed 28 tooth cassette. So that means that the biggest gear is 28 teeth, which makes it easier to pedal. And then it has a 14 on the smallest cog ring. Now, typically on bikes, you have an 11. So that makes it harder to pedal. So what I'm finding is happening is that this bike lives at 16 to 17 miles an hour. It loves it. Over that speed, the cog just isn't small enough. Um, I'm just putting down power and I just feel that my legs are just spinning, 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 spinning over 17. Now, is it a big deal? No, not at all. And like I said before, this, this is preferential. 
I don't know where I'm going. So it's something I'm just not crazy about, but it doesn't it doesn't take away from the bike, if I'm honest. Shit, I don't know where I am. <laughs> I have no idea where I am. Okay. Um, so is it a big deal? No. Is it a deal breaker? Absolutely not. It's just something that I need to note. Where the hell am I going? All right, hold on, guys. I will be back once I figure out where I am. All right, sorry about that. It's been a while since I've ridden this. So I don't recognize any of this. But man, it is... It is stunningly beautiful. So I'm hoping this is the right way to take. If not, then... Well, it is what it is. So anyways, back to what I was saying. This bike has a 14 tooth small cog, which means that you can't go as fast because there's not as much resistance. I'm used to bikes where you can pedal pretty comfortably like 21, 22 miles an hour before, you know, like your legs start spinning uncontrollably. This one doesn't do that. So just something to note, but if you like staying at 16, 17 miles an hour, you're gonna love this bike. But I will give you an update once I get more. So at about 13 miles, I hit the Silver Strand. This is a seven mile straightaway that connects Coronado Island with Imperial Beach. And what's really cool about this part of the ride is that on the western side of the strand is Pacific Ocean, and on the eastern side is San Diego Bay. And it makes for an absolutely stunning ride that may only consist of a long straight road, but has some of the best views of downtown San Diego and the Coronado Bridge. So here we are, beautiful Coronado, California. My watch says we're 24.15 miles one way. So a little longer than I was hoping, but grab some coffee, grab some lunch, and then start heading back. So after about an hour and a half and 24 miles, I finally got to my destination of the Coronado Ferry Landing, where I enjoyed a delicious latte and acai bowl with a breathtaking view of downtown San Diego. But now that I had my coffee and a quick break, it was time to head back. Here's the starting point. 44.87 miles. So here we are. So I can give you my thoughts and opinions on how the ride went today. And more importantly, how the Highboy EX6 handled that ride. So for the ride, I started in Bonita. And then I went all the way to the tip of Coronado and back, which was a total of about 45 miles and a thousand feet of climbing. So the thought process behind this review is to test out everything about the bike. Now, admittedly, I didn't really think out the route too much when I did it. I just figured, let's just ride a lot of miles and see how it goes. And at the time, it seemed like a really good idea. So the things I really want to discuss with you are the things I really liked about the bike and a couple things I wasn't too crazy about the bike. So the first thing that I really like about this bike is the battery life. Highboy claims that the EX6 can go up to 75 miles of pedal assistance range. And for this ride, I did about 45 miles and I still had about half a battery left over. Now just something to note, when I was going on the long straightaway through Coronado, I actually had a headwind coming at me. So I was using levels two and three most of the time. So just based on that, there's no doubt in my mind that this battery could do 75 miles in the right conditions. So the second thing I really liked was the seating position. So I'm used to riding mountain bikes and road bikes have a lot more aggressive seating position. So I'm not really used to sitting straight up when I'm riding a bicycle. So it did take me a little bit of time to get used to it, but overall it was really, really comfortable. The third thing that I really liked was the rack. So usually when I do filming, 
I have to carry this backpack that has all my filming gear and all the tools that I need. Now, typically when I film a review, I have to carry that backpack for my whole entire ride. But with the EX6, since I had the rack on the back, I didn't have to. And the last thing I really liked about the EX6 is man, this bike is fun to ride. I can't really identify what it is exactly. It just has that mm, factor that really just makes you smile. It could be that the bike's so ridiculous because you have the 20 inch wheels and the four inch tires and the upright seating position. I haven't really been able to identify why it was so much fun, but I was grinning ear to ear the whole entire time. So even though I really like this bike, there are two things that actually bother me a little bit. So the first one is a preferential thing, so it's not as big of a deal, and that's the seat comfort. So around mile 35 or so, my butt started hurting a lot. Now the reason why I don't consider this the biggest deal in the world is one, that was a really long ride, and two, seats are something that is just rider preference. So I'm not saying this is a bad seat, I'm just saying that after two and a half hours, my butt was hurting. And the last thing that I wasn't a big fan of was the gearing on this bike. So this bike has a seven speed cassette. It has 28 teeth in the big cog and 14 teeth in the small cog. So it might surprise you, it's not the 28 tooth that bothers me, it's the 14 tooth. The problem is it's simply not geared low enough. So typically most bikes have an 11 tooth for the small cog. And essentially what it means with a smaller cog, when you pedal, you can go faster without having your legs start spinning out uncontrollably. So what I found with the EX6 with its 14 tooth is that around 17 miles an hour was the pace where my legs were pushing pretty hard, but they weren't going out of control. But the second I hit about 18 or 19 miles an hour, I felt like I was just going way too fast and it was kind of just awkward. Now, is it a deal breaker? No, it's not at all actually. It's just a preference that I have. It would be really nice to actually pedal this bike at 20, 21 miles an hour, as opposed to being hampered to about 17 or 18 miles an hour. But overall, I'm really happy with the bike. And more importantly, I'm actually really impressed with the performance. It's a really fun bike that has the chops to go long distance. And the best part is this bike retails for only 1200 bucks, but it's not really that hard to find it for a lot cheaper. So if you do have any questions about the EX6, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much and have a great one.